Lean on me when you're not strong, and I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. It won't be till long, till I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. Bye. Have a merry Christmas. Hopefully, I can see you soon. Bye bye. Oh, and lean on somebody to have a merry Christmas. Bye. Hello, all my posse. Hi, all my new subscribers. Thank you so much for everybody that has just joined me. And thank you, of course, to my posse who's been with me from the beginning. And I hope that you, uh, you enjoy my channel and uh, everything I have to say. So, but today, come and have some tea with me. Today I've got some green tea and um, I'm gonna chat with you a little bit about Christmas stress and the anxieties that go with this holiday season. And I was thinking this morning because I was trying to get a list together of presents that I had to get from everybody. And it brought back like a lot of memories for me um, back in the days when I was a single mom and money was hard to come by and two little kids who needed stuff, who wanted stuff because their friends had it. And uh, you know, it, Christmas can be a very, very happy time. And for some, it can be a very stressful and sad time because we want to give. Christmas is a time of giving, a time of, of joy, a time of seeing kids' happy face. Uh, it's just that kind of a season. And, you know, sometimes, you know, like myself, I didn't have a lot of money. I was a struggling uh, hairdresser uh, who, who had a husband at the time who flew the coop, and I had no child support. I had nothing. I had um, a mom and dad who helped, but I think the one that helped me the most uh, was my dad's brother, who was my Uncle Pete. Uh, may his soul rest in peace, because he, Uncle Pete, was the kind of an uncle, never married, never had kids, but he was always there for me and my kids. I mean, he always made sure that they had winter coats and winter boots, and I was taken care of with my needs, and there was always gifts under the tree if I couldn't afford them, and a lot of times, you know, I, I couldn't. I mean, it was... I don't know back then what I would have done with the stress of today with Xbox Ones and games and controllers and things that kids are in, I don't want to say they're demanding, but as parents, um, you feel the need that to hear their demands because Joey's got it or Calvin's got it and why can't I get it, you know? Maybe we did that to our kids, I, I don't know. But you know what, I, th I think sometimes, and I feel so bad for parents, I, I don't know the financial status of any of you YouTubers, any of my posse, any of my new subscribers. You know, some people on here seem to be, you know, quite wealthy. Um, I am, I'm not quite wealthy at all. I'm retired now, so we're not wealthy. Um, and growing up, I was never, I, I couldn't even tell you that the the gifts that I got at Christmas time growing up, which weren't many, I think I got a Tony doll. If some of you are my age that remember the Tony doll. And I don't even really remember actually getting that as a present. I only remember it because my dad snapped a picture of me holding it and it's still in my baby album. So I know I got it. But what I do remember are traditions and family get togethers and fun and laughter. And I came from a really singing family. My dad and mom were on stage in Pittsburgh and my mother was called the Sunshine Girl and she sang and my dad played the guitar and all my family sang, my sister sang and my my brother-in-law um, was a great singer. And I remember just getting together with traditions and and having that kind of fun as, as a family. And that is what I remember most. And um, I feel really bad for some of you who are struggling out there with working so hard and working two jobs. I mean, 
two jobs in my day were unheard of. It was just the man running the household. Women didn't work, you know. Today, it's like women don't work. Like when I first went to work, I just went to work because I just felt I wanted to go to work. I didn't really have to go to work when I got married the second time, that is. Um, but today, it's almost like you have to work. You have bills to pay. You have so many things that you have to take care of today to work. And then Christmas comes. And then the stress and the anxiety and did I get my kids enough? Uh, uh, the kids at school gonna make fun of them. Now some of you might be sitting there going, what, is she crazy? Well, that doesn't happen, it happens. It happens because I, I remember even my kids back in the day coming home and saying, so-and-so got this for Christmas and I didn't get that. And I just remember as a mom, you know, heartbroken that I felt like a failure as a mom. So, so not true. What what kids really don't care and you know I remember once when my oldest son he was 16 years old and we had taken him out to dinner and we were all sitting around the table and he got up and he saluted us and he said I want to toast and thank my mom and dad who was his stepdad of course my husband now and he said for always being there and he says no matter what the circumstances you were always at my school functions you were always at my games you were always where you should have been unlike my friend who his mother would give him ten dollars if she didn't have to go to his concert and I used to say who does that but there are people that do so it's like kids just want your attention they want your love they don't they don't care. I mean, they do care about gifts today because maybe we turned them into that. But really and truly, Christmas traditions should start with traditions. If if you don't have any now, if because you're too busy, you're working two, two jobs or you're working too hard to pay for all the Under Armour gear that your kids have to have or you're so busy you know, making sure that they look good and you're so busy making sure that they keep up with the Joneses. And I'm sorry if any of my subscribers are Joneses, but that's just an old saying. But you know, you when they really only want love and attention, you know, I mean, yeah, you got them in baseball, you got them in basketball, you got them in sports and you pay dearly for the, that stuff. That stuff is not cheap today. You know, you got all that on top of Christmas stuff. I mean, back when we ran football in, when my kids were little, it was like 30 bucks to, to join the league. Now it's like 600. You know, it's not cheap to get your kids to sports. So it's, it's things that you pay for, you know, and then when you pay for them, you want your kids to excel at them because, excuse me, I got an itch, because you paid the money, so they better excel, or you worked hard for, you know, and kids, kids just want to be needed. They wanted to be loved. And you know who taught me that? My grandkids, because you know what? They love me no matter what. They don't care if I get them jack squat for Christmas or for anything. They just love me. And I think to myself, I wonder if my kids felt like that, but I, th I think so. I mean, my son will tell me things like, remember mom when we took a walk and we were walking around the block and you made me stop and you gave me a kiss and you said to me, I love you and I want you to always remember that kiss. And I'd say to him, yeah. And he goes, I still remember that, but I couldn't tell you what you got me for Christmas. And I think some of that stuff never changes. And, and you know, I just think you need to, you know, take a step back a little bit. And, and, and I know it's hard when you want to give so much to your kids, but the stress of it, you know, buying in November and December is one thing, but paying for it in January and February is traumatic. It causes stress in the family. It causes stress between you and your husband. Sometimes you get angry at your kids and you don't know why, but you're just so stressed out. And then you see those toys that you spent, you know, $200 for thrown on the floor and half of them are broken. And then it's like, oh, I paid all that money for this stuff and look, you don't even take care of your stuff. You know, we've all been through it, you know, and it's just a really bad time of year for some. And, and I, you need to just kind of step back you know, give yourself a time out in, in the room and, and figure out what was important to you as a kid. The same thing that was important to you as a kid is, is what is important to your kids or your grandkids today. Make a tradition. 
make a memory. I, you, you see me cooking in the kitchen with Bella. Bella tells me all the time, oh, Nana, we're making so many memories. That's what Christmas is all about. That's what they remember when they're older. I don't think any of your kids, if you would ask them five days after Christmas, what did you get for Christmas? They got not a clue. They don't have a clue what they got. But what they do remember are the family functions, the time that you, you give them. Everybody's so busy, so wrapped up, so Christmas parties, so looking this way, looking that way, going to functions, cooking for, you know, your family, which is fine if you if you got a tradition going. And, you know, I just remember my family, I'm Italian, and I mean, we had just this Italian tradition we had. My mom put out a spread of, you know, uh, like capocolo, it was Italian ham, ricotta cheese, uh, you know, uh, caponato, which is this jar of Italian greasy eggplants and things, and, and Italian olives and Italian bread, and my sister would make a roast, and my brother-in-law would cut it really perfectly thin, and, and just black olives, and if I didn't say that already, and just breaded steak and breaded cauliflower, and just always on the table at, at Christmas Eve time. It was just a tradition. That's what I remember, is the traditions that my family did. That's, that's the important thing. That's the loving thing that I take with me at this age. And if I ask my grandkids what they remember, They'll come up with things like, oh, remember when we made candy? And remember that Christmas when we made all these cookies? Or remember when we did? That's, what, that's what's important. Don't beat yourself up because you don't have the money. We're not all rich. It isn't, it isn't what you give. You, sometimes I think it makes you feel good as a parent. It gives you a sense of pride, like I worked, I can afford this for my kids. They don't care. You know, if you can afford even to take them on a little vacation, take them to a splash park for a weekend, that's their Christmas gift. Give them 25 single dollars each. Say, here you go, have some fun. That's what they're gonna remember. Your love and your attention. I mean, my Bella, you know, is nine. My Hayden's 11. My Hayden is taller than me. I still put them on my lap and rock them and tell them how much I love them. And that, and, <laughs> and I think, but, and they love it. And it's like in, enjoyable. That's, that's what life, that's what kids need. And I feel so bad because I talked to my friend the other day who was crying on the phone to me because I can't afford this. He wants this Xbox controller and it's like $80 and he wants this. And I go, he wants, or you actually feel the need to get him that. If you can't afford it, oh, I can't, all the kids will ridicule him at school. Isn't that awful? I mean, it's a stressful time of year, guys, and, and you should make it enjoyable. Start a tradition. Start a tradition with your families. Get off your phones. You know, I can't remember when we were young, after we ate, our families all got together. We didn't, well, we didn't have phones. We sat around and we sang. We sang songs. We, I grew up with Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Perry Como, uh, the four freshmen, if any of you remembered, uh, a group called the Hilos. I mean, we just sat around and sang and daddy played the guitar. And those are the things that I hold dear. And, and for nothing else at this holiday season, I wish you peace and I wish you happiness. I wish you love. I wish you a family time that you can cherish and that, that you remember. And, you know, don't sweat the the money stuff if if you're if you're struggling and sometimes if you just tell your kids you know like I'm a little tight this year and I told my grandkids I said you know I'm tight this year so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go overboard this year and I have done overboard stuff in my day because you know I, I said when I was divorced I was a single mom my kids got very little I think I tried to make up for it when I got married the second time because my husband was generous to a fault and I have gone a little overboard, and, and that's kind of sad. And there's been times when in January came, I thought, how am I going to pay for this? You know, oh my God. So, but, you know, for all of you who are struggling, we're not all rich. We don't all have that wealth. But what you do have is you have a heart. And if you have children, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you love them and you would lay down your life for them. They don't care if you lay down a $10 bill for them. 
They just want to know that you care about them. And you can do that in so many other ways. Start a, start your own tradition. Start something that's fun. Start, just make, make a pact that this is the way it's going to be. I mean, do something fun and don't sweat the small stuff and try not to stress at this Christmas time. I know it's a hard time for some of you. I know it's a fun time for some of you. I know it's an easy time for some of you. It depends on where your status is, I guess, uh, today. But just be happy, enjoy life, start a tradition that you, you know that your kids will remember. You may think that they may not enjoy it, but when they're older, they're gonna remember those times. And they're gonna remember the time spent with you as a parent. Children are a product of their environment. My husband always says that. If you're stressed, they're stressed. If you're mad, they're mad. If you're sad, they're sad. So be happy, give them love, give them the attention that they need. Attention doesn't mean, you know, everything that they desire that they get. That's not gonna make them love you anymore. Trust me, I, I know that for a fact. Uh, just be you and enjoy this holiday season. Enjoy, you know, your religious beliefs, no matter what they are, because that is the true meaning of Christmas. And to all of you, I wish you a very, very happy holiday, a blessed holiday, healthy, and remember, money doesn't buy happiness, it only buys choices. Be happy. I love you guys, thank you so much, and cheers to this Christmas. See you soon.